Do you have one of these Kogo 2s with an expansion port that you can use to upgrade your memory and you need to upgrade to 64K? Well, recently I made an SRAM board or a static RAM board to do just that. It's small, it's all surface mount. It plugs right in to the expansion port and it works. Now, the problem with that is that it's surface mount and some people may want to build this on their own. So in this video, I am going to take this board and I'm going to convert it into a through hole version of this board and order it so that other people can also order it and make it themselves. Recently, I made a static RAM board for the Coco 2, specifically the Coco 2 with the, the RAM expansion port. And um, here is a rendered image of that board. Uh, I have a video up showing uh, how I installed it and tested, tested it. Um, the board works, it's nice, um, but as you can see, I use surface mount components. And I realize that you know not everyone really wants to uh, do surface mount stuff because you know although you know not that hard to do you do need some special tools one of them being a microscope uh that, well you don't always need a microscope but depending on the pitch of uh, the component's legs you will need a microscope and um you know being retro and all that maybe uh, i thought that for septandy i will convert this board to um a dip package version of it and I'm going to do that in a video. Um, so here is the board that I made. Okay. And then, so the game plan is to basically replace, you know, either the, 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 the chips with their same version of the chip, but in a dip package or find an equivalent chip. And so I'll go through the process of what I usually do uh, for this sort of stuff. Now, No, it's not where I want to go. So this is my repository, my GitHub repo. And I will go here to this one. All right, we're going to clone this because I don't have it on this computer. Okay. Or I shouldn't have it on my computer, huh? I do not. Okay, so now I can open it up in KiCad. All right. Actually, before I do that, right, let's do this. I want to rename it to something like dip. You know, just to differentiate between the current um, project and what it will be called, because I'm planning on putting it on GitHub, but I should put it under, and really I should put it under another branch, but that may be confusing for some people, so I'll just have it as a separate repository. So um, let's move this uh, to something like, I don't know. So I just renamed it. Okay, and now let's open up the schematic. All right, so this is the project for the surface mount version of it. Okay, um, the schematic is where all the logical connections are made. It is not the PCB layout. And so, um, I'm planning, like I said earlier, just to find the, the same chip, but, you know, a dip version of it. So I like to use DigiKey. You can use, you know, any um, vendor you want or whatever is cheaper for you. But um, let's just start with DigiKey. I may not end up using DigiKey, but I like the way DigiKey, you know, um, organizes their stuff and how you can search for things on DigiKey. And so... Um, Go to DigiKey. Uh, never been on DigiKey on this computer. 
Okay, so the first part that I want to find is this one. Okay. And actually, see, it's I, I, I made this with JLC PCB uh, part numbers. And that's because I wanted JLC PCB to completely assemble it to bring down the cost, which it works. So if we go here, we'll find that this part does indeed exist here. All right. We'll maximize here. I tend to choose components that are in stock um, by a lot and that they're active and that they're normally available. Uh, so they can be available for a while. And so this one is here now. It's the HCT version. So we're going to want something like an LS version or an ALS version of this chip. Okay. Um, and what we'll do... Oh, I don't know. Does that exist? No, it doesn't. That's fine. It doesn't have to be LS. Sorry, HCT is fine. We just want a different package version of that. Okay. And so um, that would be found under here, under latches. Okay. And so this is where the filtering happens. <clears throat> so, like I said, I don't want a marketplace product. <clears throat> Those tend to be more expensive because of the shipping. Um, I want them to be a stock, normally stocking. Okay, that leaves us with six. All right. And then I do want a through hole version, but I don't see that there's a through hole version of this. Okay. Um, oh, well, that'll do it. Do through hole. Like I said, exclude that. Thank God. All right. So here's a chip. They have zero in stock. So let's see if they have a substitute. I don't see a substitute here. That's fine. Um, that's weird that they don't have one. Let's see a CN version of it. SN74HCT. Isn't that what I wrote? Hmm. Well then. Let me see. Let me do a quick search over here. Okay, all right, so these are marketplace items which we don't want, ideally, but if we have to, we'll get them, right? Um, but, you know, we can get the newer versions. They don't have an LS version, as you saw, but they may have an ALS version, which is the newer, you know, replacements for ALS. All right, and so they do have something here. There's 322 of these in stock. Let me see. Let's do, uh, let's filter them. Not by price, sorry. By quantity available. Okay. This is surface mount we don't want. We want this one. And although there are only 322 in stock, okay, um, you have, you know, 2,440 in factory, which means, you know, you'll trigger a back order order, which is fine. And just to make sure these are active, um, let's filter and do this. Now, although the filters are not perfect, they do help. So yeah, this is, this is one that you can expect to be around for a while. Okay, so let's choose this guy. All right, put this over here. Okay, so <clears throat> what do we need to update in KiCad? Again, you know, this is the part we're gonna update. All right, we are going to change the footprint, so let's get rid of that. Well, the footprint here is, um, it'll tell you down here, the package is a 20 dip, 7.62 millimeter. Okay, so let's, let's change that. And just to make that bigger here. 
Okay, let's go for package dip. It's a dip 20, 7.262 millimeter. Now, I don't want to solder the chip right on the board. I want to use a socket. So you can pick the socket version of it, which basically just has an outline, you know, to give you a little bit more room to place components around it, make it a little wider so it's nice and comfy. And I specifically, I do like long pads. Um, you know, if you need to solder out there or whatever, uh, it gives you a little bit more meat on there. And I like it. I mean, either one will work, but let's use the long pads version. Okay, so we've updated the footprint there. The data sheet should be the same, but you know, now that we're here, uh, let's get the data sheet uh, for this one here, which, where the heck is it? I should just copy, copy link, All right? All right, this is no longer that, this is no longer that, and that's no longer that. And so the vendor is DigiKey. Vendor part number is this one here. And I usually like to start building circuits as I find the components uh, with whatever vendor I'm going to use. And so this is sort of the process I take, I, I use to do this sort of stuff. Okay, so, and of course the part number, which is the same as the vendor part number. Okay. So that's the same. Um, the pinout should be the same because it's the same chip, but we can confirm that. Let's open up the data sheet. And I won't go through the whole confirmation process here, but so pin one is output enable, same as here. It's output enable low. Latch enable is pin 11 and that is, and it's, uh, and it's active high, right? And that's what it is here, okay? And then uh, Q0 is 19. I won't confirm all of them. Um, and we'll see that uh, Q0 is not 19 here. So look, we're going to have to make some changes, okay? VCC is 20, VCC is 20. Um, D0 is 2. And D0... is two, is one here. So, oh no, okay, fine. This is fine because this is, over here it's zero indexed and over here it's one indexed. So you start at Q1 and D1 instead of Q0 and D0. So this is fine, it's just indexed differently, but you know, it, it lines up. So for example, 13 is seven Q, but it should be six over here, right? So let's go to 13 uh, and it's Q6. So that's fine. Okay, so that works. Um, we gotta make sure that uh, we're using TTL logic here, okay? And, uh, you know, so you look at your high level, you know, uh, recommended operating and whatever. So your max and your high. So two is a minimum for these. Uh, well, this is not where that's gonna be. Okay. Anyways, I've confirmed already uh, in the past that uh, this works. So you look through the data sheet and you confirm, you know, where your max voltage input is. And um, it's in here somewhere. Anyhow, let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, this guy. So... All right, there it is, but we want a dip version of it. So let's try ALS again here. And I'll get rid of the DR at the end. It is a logic chip, gates and inverters. This is, this is an OR gate chip. All right, so same deal. I want it to be active, in stock, normally stocking. Exclude marketplace products. Gives us four. We'll apply the filters, 
and we get these guys here. Um, I just want the through hole version and we have 137 in stock, but the factory has 6,950, which means that if you run out, the factory has that many on hand to immediately send to DigiKey and the world is good. All right, so let's, let's start changing things here. Package it is no longer that package. This package should be it's a 14 dip, 7.62. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we already are in, I'm sorry. We need to go to package dip, which is right here. We have 14. Okay, and it's 7.62 and again, you can do socket, but I like socket long pads. Okay. All right. Data sheet. Okay. And again, this is DigiKey. Huh. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I don't want to deal with writing all that. I'm not a good typer. Okay, so we just have to erase this, grab a data sheet. All right, and then vendor part number, of course, is the DigiKey part number. Manufacturer part number is here, okay. Now, that's pretty good, we're almost done. Now this package is this package, okay? It's just a multi-part component um, where I'm only using one of the OR gates, the other ones are, all the inputs are set to ground and this represents, you know, the power uh, section of the chip. But, you know, these three components you see on here represent one package, so, I updated it here, so it should have updated here. And you can see that it did. Now it's a DIP14 package. But this didn't update. So what you do is you do this. Okay. And you do this. Wait, what did I copy from? from the data sheet. And then you save your work. Um, okay, now let's go to the actual RAM module. So this is a, um, I don't remember what it is. I think it's four megabit chip, right? So let's look at this part number. And this I actually bought on DigiKey. So let's see if all right, it is four megabit. Okay, and let's see if they have, let's look, at, let's look for it by the part number. Let's see if they have a dip version of it, which I doubt they're gonna have, but, oh, oops. Okay, yeah, they do not. So we're gonna have to look for something else, okay. Um, so let's just type in, you know, memory. And if you find a four megabit version, the pinout should be the same, usually most of the time, but not always. So we got to confirm that. So let's maximize here. Okay. We want to look for memory. All right. We obviously want something active in stock, normally stocking like I always do. 
and I'll apply that filter before I start even looking for uh, what I want. Um, so far we have 6,000 results, quite a bit to sift through. So let's further filter this. Um, we want through hole. Okay, that's down to 419. Okay, um, we want static RAM. All right, but then that may not always be the best thing to do to filter beforehand because sometimes the filter, it's a little wacky. All right, and all right, here's a good one. It's 435. Um, it's one megabit though, so no. But this one is four megabit. I like this guy. Um, let me see. Now, this component probably does not exist in KiCad's database. database. So we're going to have to look for a symbol that either has the same pinout and we just modify it, or we may have to create a symbol for it, which is not a big deal. And if it turns out to be the case, I'll just create a symbol and we'll pop it in there. Okay. So this is probably not going to exist in KiCad. So before I go ahead and replace this, uh, and, you know, the reason we're, we're doing this a little different is because there, uh, an, an there isn't an equivalent chip, or rather the same chip in a different package, okay? This is a different chip in a different package. So you can't quite do that the same way. So we're just going to place the component <clears throat> And hopefully there is something like that in there. So, you know, sometimes KiCad surprises me and we have, holy moly. All right. ASXC4008-55 pin PCN, whatever. Close enough. It says it's CMOS here. Um, and our chip is not CMOS. I don't think. But uh, the pinout should be the same. And by the way, this never happens. Usually when I'm looking for, you know, one of these sorts of chips, I have to create the whole list symbol on my own. So we got lucky here. I'll place that there. Let's look at the data sheet for this guy. Okay. Oh, this is a CMOS chip. All right. But is it 5 volt tolerant? is the question. And I'm willing to bet it is. Okay. All right, so input voltage is good. All right, all right, so let's see what the, um, okay. timing diagram okay well it looks like it is chip, uh, five volt tolerant it's not very descriptive here and look here we go sorry all inputs and outputs are fully TTL compatible so we can use this without having to use any sort of level changing or anything so we can plug this guy straight in all right good um, let's look at the pinout here. Okay. So the pinout for this guy. Not only do we have to look at the pinout, but we have to make sure that uh, the, the uh, control signals are the same. So we want an active low chip enable and an active low write enable. Right? Write enable is active low. Chip enable is active low. Output enable is also active low, although that one I'm not worried about because that we either go to ground or go high. So it looks like this is going to work. All right. Let's see if the pinout is the same. 12 goes to A0, 12 goes to A0, 11, A1, 10, A2, 9, A3, 8, A4, A6, 6, A6, 5, A7, 27, A8, 26, A9. 23A10, 25A11, 4A12, 
28, A13, 3, A14, 31, A15, 2, A16. Oop. What's going on here? Okay, 1 is A17. It's just not in the same place. And these are inverted. Okay. So I'll put 0, DQ0. Okay, that's the same. 13. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this goes from 0 to 7. This goes... Okay. This chip will work. I just have to be careful with 17 and 18. Which... All, we really don't care in this case, actually, now that I think about it, because 17 and 18 are one of the ones that are taking the ground anyways with an external, with these three resistors. And then it's uh, on a header here, so you can play with it, which I'm planning on eliminating now that I think about it for this. So we got lucky that these are the only ones that don't line up here, right? So it's 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Right, and then 27, 26, 23, 25, 4, 28, 3, right, 31, 2, then 1 and 30. That's just weird that those are swapped there, but that's fine. That means I can, for the most part, just move this out of the way and put that one there, and then I'll deal with those two later. So I'll move this over here. Okay, by the way, to move a component, you select it, click on M, and you can move it. Okay. And then we'll move this here. That's where I like to put, put the uh, reference there. Let's power it. All right. So these three here come out over here. And uh, I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't want that anymore. Okay, and what we're going to do is these three are just going to go to ground. Right. Can't do that right now. Let's move this out of the way. Um, right enable should go here. Okay. And we'll mirror this across the y-axis because... Just do that. Output enable, that goes to the ground. But you know what, I'll make this a little nicer. Give it. Okay. Output enable, we'll just go to ground because we want it always to be enabled because it's active low. Um, so we can just, yeah, get rid of this guy. Okay. And then this is your chip enable. Okay, that. Maybe I'll do this so I don't have to move it all. Oops, what did I do there? All right. Okay. All right, so in theory, all right, this circuit is the same as this circuit, all right? So now I can delete this guy, okay, we can work on this one. Let's bring this back over here, all right? Okay, so actually, what the heck was that? That was, let me undo, that was U2. So let's remember U2, before I delete it, let's just keep it there for now. And again, I don't wanna copy all this stuff, so we'll do, uh, what did I do there? Right. One, two, we'll add fields here, right? Three, and then we'll paste what we had from there, okay? Obviously it's gonna be a different part number and all that. So. First, we'll do this. Okay, it's a dip 32, 
with a width of 15.24. That's what it is. Dip 32, 15, 24. Okay. Um, and just get the part number. First of all, let's get the data sheet. All right, let's get the vendor part number, which is this one. All right, and then we'll get the manufacturer part number. All right, this is U2, so let's delete this guy. And all right, in theory, this will pass all electrical tests, right? So let's do just a little quick bug test. Look at that. We got so many errors. Something's wrong. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Duh. So let's move this guy. Okay. And that just could be the cause of all the errors. Let's run that again. And we have total zero, right? Which means zero warnings and zero errors. Nothing's disconnected. And, you know, all the, all the outputs are connected to inputs. So this passed. Now, as I'm doing this, I just realized my previous revision of this board has a, an obvious, a glaring omission. I didn't put bypass capacitors, which, you know, isn't a big deal because it works. But you should have them, you know. Uh, bypass capacitors are aren't always necessary, but it's good practice to use them. Um, you know, they're there to suppress or attenuate rather, uh, you know, oscillations on the voltage rail and transients and that sort of stuff, you know, so that your your circuit is happy. All right, so let's let's add capa bypass capacitors. So. We'll add the symbol for capacitor. All right, I like to use, and we're gonna use an unpolarized capacitor. And I like the small symbol, not polarized, this is polar. So, and maybe it's not here. All right, well. There it is, C small, okay. And I've already purchased, um, the capacitors for other uh, projects. And I like to use 0.1 microfarad capacitors. So I'll just copy the part numbers that I already have that I know exist, right? And so we can do that. Um, hopefully I have it here. Let's see. Actually, you know what I wanna do is open up a new version, a new instance. Okay, and then, uh, did it open up a new instance? It did. Okay, and then not the Coco 3, but since I recently worked on this Coco 2 board, those parts should be there. All right, and so I have these bypass capacitors pretty much everywhere in here, but let's, let's grab them from, I guess, the ROMs, I guess. So that's the one I want, 0.1 microfarad. All right, and I'll copy it all the way from there all the way to the manufacturer part number. Okay. And let's go over here, and which means I gotta add um, one, two, three, right? Yeah. And so value fields. Yeah, okay. I'll save that. And just to confirm, let's go to DigiKey, because this is a DigiKey part. All right. And since we have that already open, There it is, that's what it looks like. It is a 0.150 volt. Okay, and they have 21,000 in stock. They're 31 cents each. They're there, excellent. Okay, so what do we do now? Um, well, we have three ICs, so we want three of these. And you can use the C on your keyboard to copy this. So uh, one, and two copies, right? Okay. 
Um, they're going to be on the power rail, so let's copy this here. And let's copy this here. Okay. And so what I like to do is usually is something like this. All right, and of course they you need, you need a reference number here, so we'll call this one C1. We'll call this one C2, and we'll call this one C3. All right, and I think we're good. Let's do a check here. So now let's transfer our changes. Let's create what's called a net list. And it's a list of all the logical connections and uh, the footprint uh, information that will then get transferred over into the PCB program. And we'll do that. We'll start that and I'll stop the video and then start again later because I got to go to work. Okay, so this is the PCB for the previous board. And let's just look at it real fast before we change it. Okay, that is the current board. This is not what it's going to look like when we're done. It's going to be, it's got to be bigger because uh, the chips take up more room. Okay, and I'm probably going to put everything on this side instead of the bottom. Okay. And so let's undo, that's right, let's, let's unfill. Okay, so these are zones and we're going to unfill the zones. Okay, we're actually going to delete the zones because... Yeah, let's delete all the tracks. I'm going to edit and then we go to global deletions, click on tracks, and we're going to delete all those guys. And now we just have a rat's nest of stuff, which is fine. And, you know, we don't really need to delete the components. Um, it'll replace them, but I'll delete them. Just, you know. When you import, it will automatically get deleted, but... Um, I think that if I don't delete them, what will happen is that it will place those components in the position where these were. And so it will be messier instead of hanging them off to the side where I can grab them. So I'll just I'll delete these components. Okay. So let's go back to the schematic and let's export our net list. So we're generating a net list. Okay. And uh, it's going to put it right in the project directory here. Okay, and let's go back to PCB and let's import that netlist. And it, see, it detected it automatically. It sees that it's adding new symbols, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yes, I'm sure that I want to do this. And you see the chips themselves are much bigger than the board. So the board's going to change. And that's fine. We, we expected that. All right. <clears throat> and so, yeah. So what I first thing I want to do is delete the borders the edge of the chip here, of the board, because it's going to change. And there are other faster, cleaner ways to do this, but you know, this, this is pretty, pretty clear when I'm explaining something. So I'll do it this way. What I don't want to move, I don't want to move these, these headers here, uh, these pin headers or, you know, the, these things, because those are positioned correctly there. I think they're 35 millimeters apart. Um, and they already fit onto the memory port on the Coco. So we're going to place these components around all that. And so let's just measure real quick, more or less. Let me change the pitch here. And so right now the pitch is 1.27. I'm going to a smaller pitch, a finer pitch, just because, you know. And we're going to measure this distance. And it's, yeah, it's 35 millimeters. Okay. I'm um, not sure how I'm going to place them yet, um, but I'll get back to that later on after work. This is it for now. Okay. Um, earlier today, we changed all the components and the footprints.
on the schematic and we messed with the PCB a little bit. We started on that. Um, I'm back from work. Everyone in the house is pretty much wound down. Um, so I'm ready to place these components. It's not going to be, you know, a great placement, but you know, I think it'll be good enough. And then route. <clears throat> um, so let's do this. How am I going to place this? Well, first you won, which it looks, uh, it looks odd. Hold on a second. 22. I think I picked the package incorrectly, right? This is a 20 pin package, wasn't it? Yeah, this is a 20 pin package, but let's make sure. Yeah, this happens sometimes. And doing this while I'm recording is difficult for me. Yeah, it's a 20 pin package, so oops, sorry. Glad I caught that. So yeah, I accidentally selected 22 and I want a socket long pad 20. There we go. Okay. So I changed the footprint and uh, let's recreate the, um, the net list. All right, let's save our changes. Go back over here. And then this guy should get smaller now when we import the net list. Like I said, it gives us a warning, uh, it changed, blah, 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 but we can ignore that because we know what we're doing, right? Not really. <laughs> so now we have 20. Okay. It's better. Although, something still doesn't seem right. Hmm. Well, maybe it's just me. All right. Um, yeah, I had to go do something a second. I heard my kids running around. So this did an update. I got the warning, so let's just delete it. Okay, and let's bring it back. All right, that's it. And this looks right. Now that looks right. Okay. Um, let me make sure I'm still recording. I am. Okay. All right. So let's go in here and let's clear this out here. And what I mean, and what I mean is just move it out of the way because we're going to use some of that later. And let's start placing it. <clears throat> now these two components here are sharing the most lines, right? And it looks like it might be it might be something nice. So how am I going to place this? Not one hundred percent sure. Maybe I'll do something like this. Yeah, that looks like it's going to work. All right. And how do I want to do this? Um, maybe I'll line it up like that. Make some nice room there. That's roomy. And I'll bring this guy down here. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. That looks like it might work. Okay. Yeah, kind of like a square. Then this guy will place. Um. Yeah, it looks a little better. I'm gonna line up VCC here. Okay. Yeah. But I want to center this in between these two, so let's just select these components here. We can align them. 
I always mess this up the first time. Fingers crossed. Okay, that worked. And I want to measure between these two to make sure I didn't move them. This should be about 35. And we'll measure from this corner to about that corner. And we get 35. Great. Then these guys over here, um, I'm not ready to place those yet, but they're gonna go near these chips, obviously. Okay, so let's start routing. Um, I know this kind of looks tangled here, but I think it'll work out if we go, um, yeah, we go inside and out with the lines. All right, that'll work. Um, I've been using 0.25 millimeter tracks lately because that's a standard for KiCad, but it was pointed out to me that I should be using 0.35, and yeah, I agree. You know, those are it's 0.35 is good, so let's let's add a 0.35 millimeter line. <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's start routing. So I want to start routing um, on the bottom copper layer. Okay. And let's start with, um, why not? Let's start with this guy with A0. Okay. So I imagine it'll be something like this. Maybe something like that. Okay, that works. Hey, I think it's, I think it's solved. All right, so now we need a border for this, right? Or it's called the edge. So let's, I like to use maybe uh, 0.1 
grid, fine, but not too fine. Um, then you need to select the layer called edge cuts. Okay. Then you add a graphic line and this graphic line will represent the border. Um, so let's start, I guess, uh, somewhere around there. Okay. And we're going to go out to somewhere around there. And then on the lower left hand corner, you can see all the numbers moving around as I move this. Okay. And so I'm going to look for a length, um, 60, let's go to 60, right? And you can see I'm at 60. Now that angle, I don't want it to be negative 0.2. I want it to be zero or 90 or 180. So that angle is zero. Oh, Jesus. Come on. There we go. All right. So now I'm going across these guys there, but we'll fix that later. Okay. Uh, again, I want this. I, I sort of want a square. I think a square is the shape that looks good uh, for this. Um, but it, it didn't have to be, it could be any rectangle. Um, again, I want to go 60. And if I mess up, we can fix these numbers later. And I want my angle to be so negative 90, right? And my length 60. All right, that works. Okay. Let's go 60. And my angle needs to be 180. Perfect. And now it should just work. If I come up to here, it'll close. So it should be 60, 90. Okay. All right. So we need to move this around a little bit, obviously. But so far, so good. And let's select all the lines. Okay. I'll hit shift now to select these. Okay. And let's move the whole thing. Okay. Um, it might be a little small. Maybe I need to go 62 or something, or actually what I will do is bring this in just a little bit. Okay there's room for it to come in. All right, these can come in just a little bit too. I don't want them in too much, but yeah, it works. These can come in a little bit too. All right. Mm-hmm. Not the best looking board, but not the worst looking board. All right, next I want to add a fill zone or a copper pour. I learned that as a copper pour and uh, this program calls them fill zones, but that's fine. I think dip trace calls them copper pours. I'm not sure. And, um, the way I like to do copper pours is that I'll go and I'll go outside the border just cause it's easier to select. And first that is not a copper pour. What the heck's going on here? Oh, you don't want it to be edge cut. Sorry. Click on one of the copper layers. All right. And we want this to be a ground plane. So I'll first select, uh, the front copper layer. Okay. And it's going to be connected to ground. So we'll start there and it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be more or less, you know, Okay. Okay. There we go. So all that is ground and it has connected to all the other ground pins, but some of them are still not connected to ground. As you can see, there's a, there's a rat nest line there. So now let's do the same thing, but let's do, um, bottom copper ground. So, so far, so good. We just have these guys here. 
So this looks like some of these pieces are not connected. Okay. And so we got to solve that. <clears throat> so this guy is floating. So we got to make that work somehow. And it might work if we put a via here. So let's, oh, where was that? It was here, was it? All right, that solved that one. And then now this middle piece seems to be gone as well. And that might work if we put a ground. Well, that didn't work. Oh yeah, there's another one here. So that one fixed it there. Okay, let's see. It's not the best. Okay, so let's let's put one there. Maybe that did nothing. Oh, it's this one. It's just floating. Hmm. There we go. I don't like that. All right, let's undo this. And I can undo that by hitting Control V. So maybe if we move this out just a little bit more, give us a little bit more room there. So maybe I went too far in with this. All right, let's let's do those pores again. Okay, that's a little better. I'll put two in there. Okay. All right. So I think everything is connected. I don't see any line. Oh no, there's one right there. Okay. So why is that like that? This ground is not connected. Why? This is ground. This is ground here. All right, but that's not. So maybe one around here. No. So let's see, let's do a check to see which is the one that's not connected. Now you can click on this little bug there, all right? And let's look at the unconnected ones. So there is one unconnected item, which one is it? And it's hard for me to see sometimes, but it's, I guess this guy, do you see an arrow anywhere? I don't see an arrow. It's this guy. And... Do this for now. Um, can we do this? All right. Will this work? That does work, but I don't know if I like it. may not be the best way to do this sort of stuff. No, too big. Let's do 0.75. All right. None. Let's do a design rule check. So no problems, no unconnected items. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm too happy with this. Okay, but it's going to stay this way because it's fine for what it is. 
Okay. Um, let's see, what does this look like? Yeah, so I'm looking at the cocoa right now and, you know, relative uh, to these two connectors, there's some room here just south, south of that and just west of that. Um, there is room over here as well and north as well, but it seems almost as this is the, the better place to put these. Okay. Okay. Um, let's start adding some of this stuff back. So this was here before. Okay. go there okay we still need uh, these markers here this tells us how to place it so this points to the back of the cocoa and this is for the cart and I want that to be visible so that means go that way okay that means that's the back of the cocoa Maybe we'll do that there, right? Okay. Description of the board. Okay. Yeah, good enough. I'll keep that revision number because no, this is 1.01. It's the S and the dip version. Uh, what the heck is that for? Oh, the old memory stuff. Goodbye, of course. Need to know who made it. And here's the name of the board. And I will call it, I will place it, my guess here. Does that look right? And what D2S stands for is dynamic to static RAM 64K. Nothing special there. Let's see what the board looks like. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. All right. Let's do uh, some ray tracing here. See what it looks like. Not too bad. It doesn't look bad, but I need some pizzazz, something. Hmm. You know what we can do? Maybe chamfer here. Corners. Now, KiCad doesn't do that well. It doesn't really have a nice tool for it. So we're going to do it. And there are several ways to do it. And let's get rid of this ground thing over here. I don't even know why that's there. Uh... All right, let's change the pitch here. Let's do something like, um, like 2.5, right? Let's go here and, you know, set the origin to there, right? And then what I'll do is I'll go over 2.5. Okay, there we go. And what we want to do is create a corner. And what we want to do there is create another corner. Okay. We want to do the same thing here, right? Are we there? Okay, so 2.5, create a corner. Create a corner. 
Okay. Well, yeah, it will. Create a corner. Oh, where's it? Create a corner. Got one left. Create a corner. And we will create a corner. Now, I can highlight these two segments, delete them. Delete those. And those. And delete those. Let's do another edge cut. Okay. Oh, sorry. There you go. And that will connect there. That will connect there. And that will connect there. Let's see what that looks like. A little better. The copper trace is sticking out, but could fix that. Okay. I'm happy with that. Hmm. Oh yeah, you know what else is missing? We should have part numbers and values. Okay. All right. So let's look at this. All right, U2, that's on the forward silk. Now these values here are on what's called the user um, layer or the courtyard. I think those are the user. No, those are on the forward. No. Is it this one? Not the eagle layer. Huh. Oh, forward fab. They're in the fab layer. Okay, so what we want to do, I think we could do this at once. Right? Edit. No? Okay. Whatever. We got to do each one. There aren't that many components. So we'll edit and we'll move that to Ford Silk. Edit. We'll move that to the Ford Silk. Okay. Part number here. We'll edit. Move to the Ford Silk. Edit. Move to Ford Silk. Okay. Edit, move to the Ford Silk. Edit and move to Ford Silk. All right. Now, do I want it back there? Maybe I want it over here. Okay, let me change the pitch here so I can have more room to move things around. So make it easier to move things around. So we'll put that there. Um, this guy may be a little distracting there. We'll put it on the side. Same with this guy. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. All right. I think I'm happy with this. Part numbers, part numbers, labels, C2, C1, C3, U1. Oh, let me change this dip version. I mean, it's obvious, but why not? say this is ready to order. <laughs> Let's see if we can order. So to order, just pick a manufacturer. 
I lately I've been using JLC PCB. A lot of people use JLC PCB. It is very, very cheap. I don't know how they do it, but it's very cheap. <clears throat> and so let's say you want to order this board now from KaiKen. Let's do another electrical check just in case, or a rules check. Everything looks good. So at this point, what you would do is you'd go file, right? Then you plot. Actually, before I order, I am gonna print this. And I will print this just to make sure it fits where I want it on the Coco. So let's do this then. Let's print all these layers, great, whatever, okay. Um, page setup, I wanna make sure that it is whatever, none of this matters, okay. And we want it to be one-to-one, -one. okay. And we will print that, print the file, and I'll call it output.pdf in my documents. Let's do that again. Yes. So in theory, if I go to documents, it is there. And wow, what a mess. Yuck. Let's do that again. Hmm. I don't need to print the copper layers. So let's print this. Um, I don't need that. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, that looks better. And if I print it on a, let me see, I have master PDF, which is better than that guy. Okay. No, thank you. I could print this guy. All right, let's print it. And I will pause, because I'm gonna now cut this out and I will place it on the Coco. All right, so now what you see here is the printout. I cut it out and then put two pin headers there in the sockets. So it lines up, um, it's perfect on this side, doesn't really crash into anything. It's just, you know, the right distance from the SAM chip. This side is fine too. However, look, if you look under, it's, it's fine as well. This side over here, although okay, it, it could potentially crash into this capacitor that's down there. I mean, it's hovering right over it, and in all reality, in truth, it's not going to crash into it if I think about it, because this will be sitting on pin headers. It won't be this close, so it's okay. So I lucked out with 60. I'm just going to order it like this. You know, I don't, I don't think I need to shave this corner off. I think it'll be okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is going to work. Just so you can see. I like to print these out and I like to measure and make sure beforehand. I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not foolproof, but it does help. Earlier I said that I was okay with this corner over here and that I wasn't going to cut it off, but then I thought about it for two seconds and thought it isn't too hard to cut off and it's not going to affect anything. So, you know, I'll cut it off. And so I did that and I recorded it, but I lost the footage or it got corrupted or something. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so here it is. This is what it looks like. I also recorded um, what you need to do to get the Gerbers so you can order this and that also was um, lost, deleted, or whatever. Uh, so this is what we need, just so you see what, you can see what it looks like. Let's render it here. This is what it's gonna look like. Okay, looks pretty clean. Um, 
could be better routed. But, you know, this board is so small and the distances are so close. Like, this long trace here. I mean, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, it's not like we're working in the gigahertz range here or anything. But um, this should be fine. It should work. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is create the Gerpers. So you can do that by going to File, Plot. The defaults will be selected, but usually what you want, you want the two copper layers, you want the silks for sure, the pastes, and definitely the solder masks, and of course the edge cut. You click on Plot. And in the Gerber directory, relative to the project directory, those files were placed, all the Gerber files. Um, you also need the drill files, and the drill files will uh, let the PCB house know that where to drill the holes and put the vias and all that. <clears throat> so let's do that. And they were also placed in the Gerber directory. And so if we go into the project folder it'll have a Gerber directory and here are the Gerber files and here are the two drill files usually what they want is for you to compress this and send it in a zip file so here it is one single file I'm gonna upload that so um, let's go to JLC PCB Okay, and then um, the site changes every now and then, but it's pretty much the same thing. Add Gerber file, then you navigate to where you have it, and so this is in where's my KaiCan projects. You select the archive there. It loads. It has loaded. It will render the Gerber files. And there you go. This is the top. This is the bottom. As you can see, it's a very, very inexpensive thing. $2 per board. Or rather, $2 total. Not $2 per board. It's $2 total. And this is for the default amount, which is five boards. Here you can play with things. Uh, change it you know, to what you need. Um, the defaults are what you know you usually get for prototype stuff you can change the color it doesn't increase the price but it does uh, add a day or two to uh, the manufacturing process change the weight if you want two ounces it's gonna significantly increase the price it's 1850 total okay versus two dollars and you know for this we don't need two ounce boards and then you can just order it. You save it to your cart and you order it. I'm not going to order it, uh, but you know, from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. You put in your credit card information and address, and you'll get it in the mail a couple of weeks later. Well, anyhow, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I think it was kind of fun converting, you know, from surface mount components to dip components. And I think this is something that people would prefer um, over the surface mount stuff in general. Yeah. All right.